So if you look at the problem and you start to realize there are no specific problems, there's no environmental problems, relationship problems, health issues, there's just no specific problems, but cracked or distorted perception is the problem. What do they say in the Bible? You, you, you look through a darkened glass, it says in Corinthians. That's a problem, looking through a darkened glass. You can't really see. None of us can see when we're looking through a darkened glass. So if, if distorted or fragmented perception is the problem, then what is it that will stabilize that distorted perception, that will clear away that darkened glass? Jesus says, only a, a single purpose can unify perception. Only a single purpose can unify perception. So we have this purpose in it. You can call it forgiveness. You can call it atonement. You can call it the miracle. You can call it one single intention. You can call it anything you want. But this one single purpose exercised, practiced, used, done through, will unify perception. It's the purpose you bring with you. It's the purpose in mind that you bring to the projects, that you bring to the whatever you're doing. That's everything. That's your decision. It's not that the world happens to you in some kind of accidental, oh, I happen to have a bad day because this happened to me and this and this and this. You know, remember the the workbook lesson, myself, capital self is rule of the universe. It is impossible that anything should come to me unbidden my, by myself. Even in this world, it is I who rule my destiny. What happens is what I desire. And what does not occur is what I do not want to happen. Okay, you don't need a whole course of miracles. You can just use that one phrase that myself is ruler of the universe. The power of decision, lesson 152, the power of decision is my own. He says, you may believe that this is too all-encompassing to be the truth, Jesus says. The power of decision is my own. But, he says, truth has no exceptions. Indeed, that's exactly the way it is. Everything that seems to happen to me, I ask for and receive as I have asked. And there are no exceptions, ever, ever, ever. So this is where we're zooming in to enlightenment, where we start to take the empowering journey of seeing how powerful our mind is, the power of decisions, and we don't try to let ourselves get snagged into this idea that we're just raking leaves, or just doing the dishes, or just chopping the celery, or whatever, which the ego would have us freeze into. Because why? Because that's littleness. And the ego wants us to be content with littleness and just leave it at that. Just stay guilty and little. And, and a unified purpose lifts us up higher and higher and higher into a state of the celestial glory, you know, to, to a level of mind, which we see is all encompassing. So it's never about the project. It's more about the motive. What's the motive? What, what is it for? What's the motive for the project? And for me, that's the best thing in my life is, it doesn't matter if I have 50 emails, the number doesn't matter. Uh, I just pray, and if I'm guided to pick out two or three and respond to those, then that's everything. And I've never felt a sense of coercion. I've never felt a sense of duty. It's, it's not fun to feel that you have a duty to serve the Holy Spirit, you know. An obligation. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a day serving the Holy Spirit. I'm obligated uh, to the Holy Spirit today. You know, where's the fun in that? I, I would always say, what the Holy Spirit wants for me is for me to be happy, to me, for me to be inspired, for me to experience myself as I truly am, and not to hold on to this idea of what David wants, what David wants, what does, David doesn't want. You know, that's going to get me nowhere. Most of the tasks that I did at the very beginning um, even ones that, that the Holy Spirit would, 
would ask me to do, talk to somebody or call somebody and do this and this, I had trepidation and fear and doubt at the beginning because it was so out of pattern for the way I was living my life. And yet I still followed and I felt burst of joy after I got off the phone, after I visited somebody in the hospital, made a paid a visit to their house. I was just swelling with joy because I listened and followed even when the ego was saying, don't do it, don't do it, stop. You're going to lose your autonomy, you're going to lose your individuality if you keep following in that little voice. I just kept at it. No, I, li I tell the ego, I like that joy. I like that feeling of joy. I want more of that feeling of joy. And so I, I lost myself in that um, joy. I lost my ego, you could say, not my true self, but in that experience.